Hi, I'm Julie Johnson with Firebox Training. Today I'm going to show you how to create OBIEE session variables. And this is going to be a session variable that actually gets set from a database table. So we're going to uh, have each user that has an OBI account have a specific home office. And then we're going to go ahead and use that session variable in a filter within an analysis. So let's first of all get started. What we want to do is launch the BI admin tool so we can manage our variables. I'm going to go to Start, Programs, Business Intelligence, BI Administration, and then I open up in online mode. I have to provide the repository password and then credentials to access the repository. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is go to Manage, and then our variables. And we want to create a session variable, but before we do that, let's familiarize ourselves with the database table that I've already created. So this da database table exists in the BI sample schema. So I'm just gonna log in as BI sample. Okay, and I'm going to do a describe on user underscore office. And notice that we have a field called username and another uh, column uh, here called office underscore name. I know we're not consistent with the naming, but let's just remember what these uh, columns here are called. And, um, and now I'm going to do a select star from user office. And you can see that user web logic has a home office of the Perry office and P. Rodney is Bluebell office. And so when we create our session variable, we're going to have it associated with a, uh, an initialization block that's going to perform a select statement. And if the user that's logged in is not either of these guys, we need to also have a default value. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. The first thing I'm going to do is go to Action, New, Session, and I want to create a variable. So let me just call my variable home underscore office. And I'm going to check this box here, enable any user to set the value. So this is going to allow users to perhaps override the session variable value with a request variable, which I'll show you in a bit. Okay, now every session variable has to have an initialization block. So right now it's not assigned. I want to hit new. Now if we already had an existing initialization block that got the job done, I could just select it from here, but I don't have that. So I'm going to hit new. And let's give our initialization block a name. I like to stick with this naming convention. It's the same as the variable name and then underscore init. Now if uh, this is going to be based on a SQL statement, so of course we have to have a data source. The data source type is database, and we do have to have a connection pool so we know which database to connect to and which schema. So I just click on Browse. And in one of my databases here, this, this is all defined on the physical layer, I already had sample app init block uh, connection pool created. Now, um, if we take a closer look at this, really it's just a connection pool that connects to my ORCL database, specifically with the BI sample username. Okay, so I select that. And now that I have my connection pool, I'm going to put in my initialization string. So here I'm going to do a select. And what are, what is my SQL statement going to look like? I want to select the office underscore name from user office from user office where username equals and in here I'm going to put quote so that's a single quote colon user colon user evaluates to the user who is currently logged in. Okay, so keep in mind that with session variables, they always get set as soon as the user logs in. Okay, so now I'm going to hit OK on this. And I'll hit OK down here. 
As far as the default initializer goes, if a user is not in the database, we need to have a default value. And we'll just use single quotes here. And we'll just say the Figueroa office, like that. And then we'll hit OK. We are almost finished. I want to go in here and do a save. Check in my changes. Check for global consistency. Okay, no errors, warnings, or best practice violations. Wonderful. Now, it tells me I have to manually restart each non-master Oracle BI server instance in the cluster. In other words, I just need to bounce my five components, uh, my BI components. So the fastest way to do that, I could do it from the web interface. I could also, it's easier and faster to do it like this. OPMN, CTL, stop all. That takes just a few seconds to stop the processes and then I'll do OPM and CTL start all. Okay, so now let's do a start all. Okay. Okay, and now um, I can just check the status by doing OPM and CTL status and you should see that all of these are alive. Now I'm going to um, go ahead and see if it's actually getting set. So remember the session variables get set when the user logs in. So let me sign out and then let me sign back in again. And then I'm going to launch my BI admin tool. Okay, and so now one of the things that we can do to monitor our variables is we can go to Manage Sessions. And this screen actually refreshes itself every few seconds. And you can see the username and the client type. So if the client type is administration, it's referring to the BI admin tool itself. If the client type is ODBC, then it's talking about uh, the connection. Uh, it, it could, it's most likely going to be this connection right here through the browser. So notice that every few seconds we get the little hourglass, it's just refreshing itself. I'm going to actually hit pause on here so it stops refreshing. And I'm interested in web logic right down here. Here are all of the current variables that are set for user web logic. And I'm going to scroll down until I find the home office and there it is. Okay, so it's the Perry office. Now, let me do a normal refresh rate on that. I'm now going to sign out, sign back in as P. Rodney. Then we're going to monitor the variables again. Here's P. Rodney. Put that on pause, scroll down a bit and Home office is Bluebell office. Okay, one last test I want to do, and that is let's try somebody other than those two people. So S. Atkins. Go back in here. And home office is Figueroa office. Okay, perfect. So everything's getting set properly. So now I want to actually use this in an analysis. Okay, so um, let me go ahead and uh, sign out. I'm going to sign back in as user web logic. And I'm going to create a new analysis. This will be based on sample sales. And I'd like to include the year as well as the office perhaps uh, right in here, the department maybe, and under base facts, we have revenue. So as of right now, there are no filters. What I'd like to do is filter out by the office. So only show the user's home office. So if I go in here, here's the office. I can click on this drop down and hit filter to get to the filter wizard. I can also get there by clicking on here. So here I'm interested in filtering by office is equal to or is in. And instead of hard coding in a value right here, let's add more options. 
I want to reference my session variable. Okay, so my session variable's name, and it is case sensitive, it's home office. Okay, so I hit OK on there. Let me hit the results. Look at that. Now, it doesn't really make sense to have Perry Office appear over and over again in here, so I might just want to right click on here and hide the column. I do want to have some kind of a uh, visual indicator on the page that we are that that these revenues are just for that home office. So up here in the title, I can edit the title and I'm going to say revenues by year and then for the subtitle I can say for and I'm going to reference my session variable. So the way we reference a session variable here is we do at sign curly brace and then BI server, notice that's a capital S in there, it's all case sensitive, dot variables, square bracket, inside of the square brackets I need single quotes, inside of those single quotes I'll say NQ underscore session in all caps, dot, and then the name of my variable, so home underscore office. As soon as I tab out of there, I can get a quick glimpse of what that looks like. If I have any typo in here, then it will just it won't get rendered properly. In other words, if I say, for example, lowercase h, look what happens. It doesn't get interpolated. Okay, so that's looking good. I'm going to hit done. Let me save this. I'm going to save this under my Julie folder. And I'm just going to call this uh, using session variables. Okay, so I am logged in as user WebLogic. What I'd like to do is now log out and log back in and run that same report as P. Rodney. Okay, so let me go to the catalog using session variables. Let me open this up and see how it's now by Bluebell Office. So I hope you got a lot out of this video tutorial. Please visit our website at www.fireboxtraining.com.